Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to revise one day before paper one. What's the most important things that you got to cover? And then also what to do on the exam day itself. Okay, so first I want to say congrats. You've got through like your sec 3 and sec 4 period. You've got through this exam period. You've got through the O-levels. You've got through all this mugging and studying. And now you're near the end. And it is already more relaxed. So I want to say congrats and it must feel good, right? They've got, gone through all this already. So uh, we, we should relax and we should celebrate. Okay, however, don't go overboard, right? So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be either extreme at this point. Like before this point, uh, it was to the extreme of just mugging, right? And that was a good thing. Now, if you keep staying in that extreme of just mugging, it may be a bit overkill. It uh, may be better to relax a little bit. And what I mean by that is that in between your papers when you're studying and doing the MCQ papers, in between, um, feel free to relax, feel free to take a break walk outside, talk to people, talk to friends, and go out. Feel free to do that, but not to the extreme where like, you binge on shows in between papers. That's probably not a wise move. Okay, and this is also um, the most worth it paper that you could possibly do out of paper 1, 2, and 3. Because it's 30%. You know how insane that is? It's even more than the practical. Like, think of how difficult practical is compared to MCQ paper. Like, at, at practical, you only get 20%. You have to study, revise so much, you have to draw graphs or whatever. Uh, you have to, you know, in the lab with those test tubes. And you only get 20%. Okay? Then, the, this paper, you just shade some little tiny ovals on the OAS. And that's it. <laughs> and it's one hour. And in fact, you can finish the paper in less than one hour, right? I'm sure most of you finish it earlier than one hour. So, it's so easy to get this 30%. Right? And it's a 25% chance for every question that you get correct. It's so, so easy. So you have to get it. You have to. Because if you lose the opportunity to grab as close to 40 marks as possible, then other people are just going to surpass you significantly. Right? And also those of you who are A1 standard and A2 standard students, I hope many of my students are watching this, you'll feel this way. I want you to be able to differentiate yourself. Okay? And unfortunately, the paper 2 didn't seem that hard. So that makes it a bit difficult to differentiate ourselves, okay? So all the more, we have to ensure that our base, right, that matches the other students, uh, is also there, okay? If we don't have that base that other students also have, then how are you going to differentiate yourself, right? The only way is that the base, and what I mean by the base is the easier questions are, the easier parts to get. So this one, paper one, is the base, okay? It's part of the base. We have to get it so that the paper two, based on your more practice in your keywords and your CAQs, you now can beat the other students, and you can differentiate yourself. Okay, so you have to at least get the base, right? And so this is the base. Super worth it, super easy to get. Um, we have to get it, okay? And I also want to give you some good news. So some students, you might feel like, you know, I, I'm feeling a bit discouraged because I want to get as close to 40 or 40, but I notice that I'm only getting like 30-something only, or maybe even under 30 for harder papers. So I want to give you good news. This is the fastest one to improve at. Is in the shortest time, in a few days, you can turn things around significantly. Okay, so what is the revision strategy for MCQ? It's very simple. Just spam doing papers. Just spam MCQ papers. And they're quite fun also, right? Like, you can finish one in like around 30-something minutes. You check, you do your correction, you understand what's wrong. Then around like one hour has passed, okay, for one paper, including the review. Then what happens is you can take a break for that next half an hour, and then you come back and then you do again another new paper. Okay, so it's quite fun, and it's not so painful to your brain overheating uh, compared to the other papers, right? So it's very fun and you can spam a lot. So you must finish at least all 10 years of the TYS. At least. Okay, that's the minimum you must do. Why? Because there's so many repeated questions and the concepts repeat also, even though they may change a few things of the diagram, but the concepts repeat. So if you don't do all the 10 years, you're really like losing out on free advantage that the TYS is just giving you. And uh, if possible, you do even more. Right, we have papers, the answers in our TYS. Okay, let me just type the link, tinyurl.com slash tbt TYS. Yeah, so anyway, this is an our Telegram channel, so if you click the pin message, uh, you will be able to click that link of the TYS answers. And so, um, yeah, we, we have more than just the past 10 years. We have a bit more, so you can, re you can check against those answers. Okay, then, if you're done with that, Go to prelim papers. Okay, if you're a student, we have like over 100 of prelim papers. Go find the paper one and just 
go to the challenging questions. You can do the whole thing, that's also okay. Or you can specifically go, hmm, this one seems very easy, I'll get it. Oh, this one seems like uh, I'll be confused in the exam. Then you purposely do those challenging questions, okay? Okay, now I want to give you, uh, I think this is one of the most important tips when, when spamming the MCQ papers. Because a lot of students will just rush through. Okay, then the quality drops. And you might actually be practicing bad habits. We don't want to practice to be in the mindset of, I want to you know, rush through as fast as possible and like, ah, I got some careless mistakes, it's okay, it's just a practice. Then later in the real exam, you'll do the same thing. Okay, so please, we want to rid ourselves of all the careless mistakes. Don't allow that, okay, even though it's just a practice. Don't allow the careless mistakes, even when you're practicing. I know it's a temptation because I've done that myself. And then I got so pissed with myself, you know, like after I did, how come I got like five careless mistakes, five out of 40 marks were lost from just being careless. Like I was so pissed with myself. This is not my standard. Yeah, so then I decided, okay, the next paper I'm going to do, I'm going to be much more careful. Okay, so don't allow yourself to just be careless because it's a practice. Quality still matters over quantity. So don't be like, oh, well, um, the bio tutor says to do like 20 papers, so I'm going to just do like 20. You know, they, they say to spam, so we're, we're just going to spam 20 papers. I'd rather you do 10 papers carefully and, and review the corrections, really understand where you got wrong, than do 20 papers just rushing through. Okay? So it's a balance between being extra careful and yet you are going fast enough so that you finish the paper before one hour. Why before one hour? So that you can check. Okay, it'll be best to finish the paper around 35 to 40 minutes. Then the rest of the time, actually no, I would say 35 minutes. Then you have five minutes to do all the shading. Then you have the rest of the time to check. Okay, sorry, let me, let me re reorder that. 35 minutes is doing the paper. Checking for 20 minutes. Then the last part, then I would uh, shade. Okay, now you have the freedom to move the order backwards. If you want to shade first because you're scared, oh, what if I don't finish shading everything in time? Okay, can also. Okay, so now for practicing being extra careful, why I say that is because um, we have this tendency to rush through and be careless, right? So use this chance to practice to be extra careful for the exam. Because it would be so pitiful if after the exam, then uh, you compare to the answers that uh, we will make, okay, and we will send out on our Telegram channel the our answers. And then you'll be like, oh no, that one was a careless mistake. Okay, you, you, you will really regret it, so be extra careful. Right, and then um, bonus number seven has many useful things for MCQ. Okay, it is the exam smarts hat. Okay, as, as for um, those who are not our students, you won't have this. Those, this is for our students, right? You will have the exam smart hacks um, notes in our notes. Okay, and then let's find the MCQ stuff. Yeah, so we have some hacks on annotating, okay, and the best practices. So, um, annotations means number one, you know, underlining, highlighting, doing working basically, doing the working. Don't need to maintain a pristine paper, it doesn't matter. Just do your working as much as you need. Annotating also means um, beside the options, right? Then you use these things like a tick, like a tick and a question mark. So that means like, mm, I think it's correct, but I'm not very sure. So then later, if you end up with these two as your top two options, right, you choose the one that is just a tick because that's the most confident option. Okay, MCQ always choose the best answer, the most confident option that you're most confident in. Okay, you, you might be like, hey, I didn't really, you know, study this enough, so I don't know whether I'm correct. But still, choose the one that you're most confident of. That is usually the correct answer. Okay, that's your best chance of getting the correct answer. So these kind of hacks, right, uh, and tips are in here. And so please read this. Okay, and, and I, I just want to highlight, other than the annotation, uh, two other tips, okay? Come back to those questions that you are stuck on. Don't just stay stuck and then think, think, think. Because you realize all of them are worth the same one mark. If a question takes you 10 seconds to do, you get one mark. If it takes you three minutes, still one mark. So you realize that it's not worth wasting our time on those harder questions, right? Just go on and then come back later. If at the end, you end up missing out that question completely because it was so confusing, it's okay, at least you got 39 out of 40, right? <laughs> Compared to, um, you know, waste so much time and then you cannot do the easier questions. So, by the way, these exam smart hacks, um, uh, also, some of them are also in this YouTube video, which we will link in the description. Okay? And one more trick I have is I like to shade the OAS five at a time. 
because I find that this is the right amount where I can still remember. Okay, when I read A, B, C, okay, then I transfer, right? A, B, C. But I realize that my brain can store up, up to five comfortably. So like A, C, D, C, B. Okay, A, C, D, C, B. Right, if I go beyond five, it starts being A, did I remember correctly? Then it's inefficient. If you go below five, like you just do one at a time, then also it's very slow because you have to keep flipping back and forth. Um, and I have, okay, before I say the trick of how to remember, right? There was one more thing I was going to say about shading. Oh, yes. And also, five is easy to count in. Because you can, you can look at a page, uh, sorry, you can look at a question number to see whether you miscounted or something. So after one to five, what am I expecting? Six, right? Six to ten. Then I check, okay, am I at question six now? Yes. Okay, did I end at question ten? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's easy to count and make sure that you're not on the wrong row. Because if you shade on the wrong row, you know, devastation, you would make a lot of options wrong row also, and then you have to erase so many, right? So that's why five at a time, easy to count, easy to check that I'm on the right row for the question and the OES uh, question, for the OES, that, that, that answer. Okay, so I also have one hack um, about shading, how to remember the five, okay? So let's say that the five is, I just randomly came out with this, okay? Okay, so it's going to sound really ridiculous, okay? But this is the method I use. I will, after I read the five, right? I'll try and pronounce this as if it's a word. So it's like, abacadaka, okay? Abacadaka. Then I'll just take this word and I will then say abacadaka and I will be like, okay, A, B, C, D, C. Okay, so that's how I easily transfer it over. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so this one is bad kb or you can say bad cb, okay, or bad bc, whatever it is. So I'm, I'm now making it like an easy to memorize word that I can transfer over and then I shade, then I throw it away. I don't even remember it anymore. Okay, so I show you another one. Let's say this is the, the five, right? Badad. Okay, I'll just think badad and then I'll write. Uh, I'll shade. So this way, uh, it helps me to be more efficient at transferring because i less likely to make mistake. Okay? Then, now about exam day tips. On the exam day, okay, my students, you have the full CAQs. If you are not our student, you have topic 1 to 6 CAQs. Uh, it's found if you are joining, if you have joined our Telegram channel. Okay, and let me show you an example of what this looks like. So let me go to topic 6 CAQs, which everyone has, even if you are not our student. Okay, and it has... MCQ, CAQs. That means these are the common MCQs that come out repeatedly over years. So if I were you, I would make sure to look through these and understand them and get the correct answer um, before the paper, so on the day itself. Okay? Or maybe the night before, because it starts at 8 a.m., right? So if you're not going to have much time, then I'll put exam day or the night before you do this. Okay, so MCQ, CAQs, scan through them briefly because chances are something like that might come out. Like, see this diagram, right? It has come out many, many, many times. Okay, sometimes they ask about what's the urea concentration instead of CO2. Sometimes they ask about oxygen concentration. But if you understand this whole question, it will benefit, it will be an advantage, right? So I'll do that first. Okay, then next, bonus six, misconceptions. So this one, if you have um, only one thing you can do, before the paper. So like, let's say you're traveling there, okay, so on the way to school, I will look through bonus six. Okay, again, this is for my students only. Y'all have access to the bonus notes. So in bonus six, I have compiled all the common misconceptions students have. Okay, and a lot of these end up being um, affecting your MCQ answer. So there are some MCQs where they point to the different parts of the cell, and then they point to Goji body as one of the parts. Huh? And then say, okay, which of the parts here are involved in protein synthesis? And then a mi common misconception is students will discard Goji body. Okay, but it is involved in protein synthesis because it does the modify sort and package, right? So when it modifies a protein to make it the fully, you know, the completed version, then you can still count it as it was involved in making the final form of the protein. So that's why it can be in one of the answers as uh, we, we should choose Goji body. Okay, so some other ones like plant cells, all plant cells have chloroplasts. No, that's not true. Okay, uh, and this one, let me show you. 
this this question you've seen it last time in a in a TYS MCQ, and uh, water potentials are negative. Okay, they're not positive. So this one, a lot of students ask me about. Hey, why is the MCQ answer like that? And this is the answer. Okay, so please go through the common misconceptions. It was it probably would save you some MCQ marks. Okay, then last one is just ensure that all memory shortcuts have already been memorized. Okay, so even if you are not our student, in our notes, it's scattered throughout our notes, right? All the memory shortcuts. So if you are our student, we have compiled it nicely in bonus five. And then I will just go through and I'll just make sure that, okay, have I memorized all these things? Because they'll help you. So, so some of the things that will really benefit you, uh, i give you an example, is digestion enzymes, lap and limp. Okay, so the yesterday's class, right? Someone said, wow, if I didn't have these two memory shortcuts, uh, I would have completely died at this MCQ. Because there was an MCQ testing on what these juices contain. So what does pancreatic juice contain? Oh, I don't know what enzymes, I can't remember. But if you use the memory shortcut lab, then it's like, okay, lipase, amylase, and protease. Okay, and then it also helps you to sort out which is which and not confuse them between the two. So this is super useful if such a question comes out. Then another one is cat scratch leather furniture. Um, this has come up very frequently in the eye questions where they ask like, oh, how would the eye change if you're looking near or far? And then also for pupil reflex, if it's a dim room or a bright room, what would change? Then how would the radial or circular muscles you know, change? So these two, uh, I feel like rel relatively high chance it can come out. Okay, so make sure all these have been memorized. It will help you as well. Okay, so that's all I have to say. And after the MCQ paper, right, I'll do my best to send out the, my, my suggested answers at around 10 a.m. plus, okay, in, in our Telegram channel. So if you have not joined that, then what are you waiting for, you know? So please join our Telegram channel. This is the link, t.me slash that biotutor VIP club. We'll put this link in our uh, video description. And you can just search that biotutor actually on Telegram and you'll find the channel. Uh. So just join that. Okay, so all the best. This is the easiest paper to get and the one that you is the most worth. So yeah, continue, continue mugging. And actually all these a lot of these tips you can apply to your other subject uh, papers as well. I know on Friday you got chem and physics, right? And I'm sending this out on Thursday. So hopefully this could help your other subjects also.